Yeah, good morning, guys. We're told the victim was on his way to this Wells Fargo bank behind me when he was approached by a gunman that shot at him several times, and the person responsible is still on the run. They said it all happened around 3 a.m. when that gas tanker made a right hard turn on the 15 going southbound near Lake Mead, rolled over, and exploded. Now, as you can see, cleanup crews are working on the huge mess this explosion caused. Earlier when we arrived on scene, you could see thick, heavy black smoke from miles away. Now, the truck was engulfed in flames, and we talked to some people who were in the area just moments after it all happened. I was watching TV, and when I watched, I watched in stereo, so I got four speakers going, and I heard this thing through my speakers. Oh, four or five. It's loud. It's pretty scary, man. I was, I was scared. I didn't know what was going on. I thought, I thought it was maybe a terrorist attack or something. Now the truck had 9,100 gallons of fuel in it, and the driver, believe it or not, walked away unharmed. Now they are letting traffic go through on 15 northbound, but 15 southbound is still closed. As you can see, uh, 15 northbound traffic is moving pretty smoothly here, but southbound they say you can expect it to be closed for quite some time as they continue to clean up the mess they left behind. Reporting live, Diane Two is on Fox 5 News, local Las Vegas, with a home in flames. And security bars tighten throughout all the doors and windows of a home you see behind me. Fire crews struggled to get the man who lived inside. Now we're told the fire started around midnight when fire crews arrived on scene. They immediately tried to rescue the 80-year-old victim who was stuck inside. Firefighters say the toughest challenge was getting through the door and window bars. It took them about nine minutes to get to the victim. Hey, good morning, Diane. You okay in there? Yeah. Yeah, good morning, guys. I I'm a little claustrophobic, so I don't even know why I sat in this machinery to begin with. But anyways, if you've been any <laughs> Anywhere near the convention. You know, I'm becoming more and more Irish as the hour goes by, so next time you'll come to me, I'll probably be dressed in a full leprechaun suit or something. <laughs> Rain and cold front we've been getting here in the valley. Most people have mixed opinions about the drastic change in weather. With just a few hours left before Christmas Eve, retailers are making that last minute push of those sales, and shoppers are scrambling to get those deals before the clock strikes midnight. Authorities believe the suspect who robbed the Bellagio of $1.5 million this morning is the same suspect who robbed the Suncoast Casino poker room just last week. He parked, he walked in, he committed the robbery, and he left. That's exactly what the surveillance video shows of this man, who was wanted for running off with $1.5 million worth in casino chips. The suspect arrived on a motorcycle and parked just outside the North Valley, and the suspect was also wearing a full-faced motorcycle helmet. He then entered the casino and went directly to a craps table where he confronted several patrons with a firearm. People were already kind of suspicious on who he was because he was walking through a casino hotel with a helmet on, and who, who does that? That's when authorities say it took him no more than three minutes to swipe the craps table clean of casino chips before jumping right back on his motorcycle and leaving the scene without a hassle. But authorities believe they've seen this man before. This is believed to be the same suspect that robbed the Las Vegas Suncoast Casino poker room on December 9, 2010 at approximately 12.30 a.m. by similar means. In this event, he was also operating on a uh, sport bike motorcycle. But those who work in the gaming industry say the suspect won't get very far with those casino chips since most of them can easily be traced. Most of them have RFID, which is radio frequency identification tags on them so that you know whether or not what chips were stolen. They all have a unique unique ID to them, so if you go to redeem them, they're going to know that was a stolen chip. Which means whoever dares to walk in the casino property trying to cash in on the millions of dollars worth in chips may not get very far. The little tag or the microchip that's embedded into these chips are very trackable, uh, and the radio frequencies that are attached to them gives us the opportunity to scan and identify when that chip is, is around or on property. Now, Metro described the man as a white male, about 5'10 in height and weighs about 220 pounds. He was last seen wearing a white motorcycle helmet. The motorcycle he was driving is described as a 2009 or 2010 black sports bike. If you have any information, you're asked to contact Crime Stoppers. It's been about a year behind schedule, but slowly but surely, the Tivoli Village project is getting closer to its finishing touches. And a lot of people who live in this area say they're excited to see this all come together. These little devices that will get you in trouble. Nevada is one step closer to joining other states where using your cell phone behind the wheel is against the law. There's a dip in the wedding industry, but wedding chapel owners are getting creative with attracting more business. Good morning, I'm Diane Tuazon. I'll tell you all about it coming up next.